<laughs> the soap, oil, and grease in this water must be treated or disposed of properly. So the shop vac sucks up the dirty water into a drum for later treatment or disposal. The polluted water that comes off engines is like the water that comes off streets and parking lots when they're cleaned. Because he steam cleans flat surfaces and vehicles, Scott Burns learned about pollution prevention early on. Back in the late 80s, they uh, was doing fleets of trucks and realized that the amount of grease and oil that we were generating was definitely going to become an issue. Scott developed a system for collecting dirty water and disposing of it properly. The pollution prevention methods he uses inside his shop are very similar to the methods you saw him using earlier around the parking lot storm drain. A concrete berm and sloped floor direct water to a sump. The water, polluted by steam cleaning the truck's engine, collects in the sump. It's much too dirty to go into the storm drains or the sanitary sewer. Polluted water from the shop and from outside jobs goes to a treatment or disposal company that has a permit to dispose of polluted water. The local sanitary sewer agency gave Scott permission to send less polluted water from washing cars, for example, to the sanitary sewer where it goes to the sewage treatment plant. So this kind of dirt doesn't go to the sanitary sewers or to the storm drains. This company is preventing pollution as it cleans a gas station. Mats and portable booms keep oily, soapy water out of storm drains. We're doing this work to uh, stop uh, storm drain runoff pollution from mobile pressure washing activities, uh, such as cleaning gas stations and parking lots. Anytime you have to remove used motor oil or paint, so that's what our primary focus is on. Workers vacuum the dirty water into a tank inside the truck. At this point, the water could be trucked away for proper treatment or disposal, as it was in earlier examples. But this company uses a different approach, on-site treatment. Workers can clean up dirty water right at the job site. Special materials are added to the water that bond with the pollutants and form solid particles. The solid particles settle on the bottom of the tank and are later disposed of as non-hazardous. The cleaned up water is pumped directly to the sanitary sewer on site, but only if the local sewer agency has given the company permission. So the water is clean, the pavement is clean, and the environment is clean. Pressure washing buildings is another kind of job that can cause water pollution. Paint chips can be toxic, so if you're cleaning buildings that have old or peeling paint, you need to take the same precautions you use when you clean parking areas. Even when you wash unpainted buildings or buildings with paint in good condition, you must keep pollutants out of the streets and storm drains. Basically, we follow all the guidelines that, that are set down by BASMA. We teach them to take things into the landscaping where necessary or collect. If it's, if it's a real high toxicity, if it's something really bad like oil from a parking garage, then those things are collected. Okay, this is the low side of the area right here, the low side of the drain. So most of the water is going to accumulate over here. This is our, our backup, the cover for the drain. The first line of defense is the dike right there. We don't want to use the cover. It's just there for a backup. The dike is going to keep the water away. That's our secondary right there. So then we'll put the sump pump right there and take the water away before it has a chance to fill this in. This paint is in good condition, so it's okay to let the wastewater fall on the lawn and planting beds if the owner has given permission.
algae, molds, and ordinary dirt on buildings, sidewalks, and plazas can be disposed of in the landscaping or even in the street if you're washing only with water or steam. But it's still important to pick up as much dirt and trash as you can before you pressure wash. Five years ago when I started doing this, um, there wasn't really much that I was aware of, of regulations about going to storm drain. Now, we're pretty much told to um, block drains, pick up debris, um, try to use not, no soap or less soap as possible to achieve, achieve a good job. When you're washing other areas too, around dumpsters or to remove graffiti, you need to protect streets and storm drains. Use dry cleanup as much as you can and keep wastewater out of the streets and storm drains. This downtown plaza looks pretty clean. Look for any drains that might be covered up. I see some rust stains here. We might want to, if we have any, we have any wet sand, we might want to blow that off if we have it. Since the workers have protected the storm drains before cleaning, the sandy water will go to the ivy, not into the bay. We thought it would be very tough to comply. We didn't want a lot of red tape. And it became now a second nature where we can just really do it. It does uh, it require staff being uh, educated and reminded, especially when new people come in. As you've seen, Workers can put pollution prevention into action on many different kinds of jobs. By cleaning up before you wash down. By washing without soaps or solvents whenever you can. By keeping polluted water out of storm drains. and by disposing of wastewater correctly and legally. Following these rules protects the environment and protects your company and its clients from government fines. Pollution prevention can also lead to more jobs and better paying ones. Companies and workers trained by BASMA can use their training to attract and retain clients. BASMA pamphlets and pollution prevention vouchers show your clients that you have helped them protect the environment and obey the law.